Uh, two other all-star names that are floating out there, people are going to be wondering about. Dame Lillard, obviously he's out right now with the oblique. Bradley Bill down in D.C. Are you hearing anything about those two guys possibly being on the move? Yeah, I mean, I'll tell you that, you know, a, a Knicks fixture told me in the summertime, um, there's an interest, but how does that work? Um, to me, stylistically, Damon Lillard fits like a glove on Boston, but are you going to give up Jalen Brown and Jason Tatum? I, I think that in this situation with Lillard, if I'm Portland and if I'm Lillard, you find a way to make it work in the offseason, a la like Kevin Durant, or excuse me, Kevin Garnett in Minnesota. I think he spent so much time in the city. You want to have a clean break, not a messy break during the season. I think that ultimately he's going to have to make a decision. I want to leave. And if I leave, what does that look like? Like when you looked at Chris Paul, when he ultimately went to Phoenix, Remember, I gave you a list of teams that he had interest in. The Knicks, the Sixers, the Suns. Sam Presti allowed him to pick where he wanted to go. Same with Russell Westbrook. If you paid attention to my reporting in the summer around 4th of July, I told you Russell was likely going to, to L.A. He gave the Wizards a list. The Lakers is where he wanted to go. It didn't work out the same way that it did with Chris Paul right now. I mean, Chris Paul went to the finals. The Suns. But I, I think in this situation with Damian Lillard, um, I think it would look so much better if they tried to do something in the offseason. Okay. And then, and then Bradley, Bradley Bill, you think he's moved before the trade deadline? I think that this is a conversation that's, again, that's going to happen in the summertime. I, I think that the, the Wizards went through a slump. I, a, a Wizards fixture said this to me. They, they said it best, and it made a lot of sense. The Wizards had a fast start. When I looked at the Wizards at the beginning of the season, even in the offseason, I looked at their roster. I looked at the Wizards and I looked at the Bulls and I felt like they were the, 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 the speedy red Maserati that they didn't see coming. The Bulls are still speeding. The Wizards are waiting for AAA. And I think that when you look at the Wizards, the thing to me that I really enjoyed seeing was the fact that Spencer Dinwiddie would get his shot to just be the star that I know he can be. And Kyle Kuzma would be able to break away from the Lakers and star on a Wizards team the same way Brandon Ingram ended up leaving Los Angeles and going to New Orleans. And so far, that hasn't been the case. I think for Bradley Beal, I also think that he's not as well received in Washington as, say, John Wall. Mm -hmm. John Wall, to me, in Washington has the same stain comparatively, even as he left, that Allen Iverson has in Philadelphia to this day. Mm -hmm. That doesn't translate the same way. And in fact, when I look at Bradley Beal, it gives me Andre Iguodala vibes when Iverson was on his way out and the Sixers became Bradley Beal's team, or the Sixers became Iguodala's team in the same way that the Wizards were inherited by Bradley Beal. Yeah. They don't love you the same because you, 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 you didn't have that same love and intimacy with the city. That doesn't mean that you're still not effective. Now, I know that in past, teams like the Pelicans have inquired with the Wizards, and you know Bradley Beal has said all of the right things. I think Bradley Beal is now in a similar situation last year that Zach Levine was in. And when you look at it on paper, to me, Levine and Bill were in the same situation and the team got an overhaul. It's just that there was no production on the floor so far for Washington because they're still waiting for AAA. Yeah. See, versus the Bulls are still speeding. So in answer to your question, I think that's a question that Bradley Bill is going to have to have with the Wizards front office mm -hmm. and see what happens. And I think that that is an off-season conversation not a trade deadline conversation. Well, all right. So just really quick before, before we switch over, because you, you were in Philly this past week. So it would, never any type of maybe Ben Simmons for Bradley Bill conversations. I haven't heard it. No. Okay. I think that might be a, a good trade for them too to bring Bradley Bill over there and let him. I, thought, I, I know that that has, that has been, a topic of conversation amongst report other fellow reporters, and I, I won't downplay them. Maybe they heard something I didn't hear. 
But I think sometimes those are brief conversations that never materialize and could be revisited later. I've been wrong before, but I've been right too. And I feel like oftentimes when you make these trades in the Atlantic or the mid-Atlantic, you still got to see those guys four times a year. Yeah. Yeah. Traditionally, you look at teams like the Celtics. You don't really see a ton of Celtics Knicks trades because you, you're in the Atlantic Division. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So you, you're hearing it on the Sixers side as it relates to the, the Sixers and the Nets with, with Harden and, and Ben Simmons, and then you're hearing it on the Washington side, with Ben Simmons and Bradley Beal. I feel like someone like James Harden is more of a compliment stylistically to Joel Embiid than Bradley Beal. So the best move is to wait it out. Wait it out or get Harden at the deadline. Yeah, and, and, to, and to your point, Scoop, as you mentioned, I, I do agree Harden is a better fit, but also the relationship already with Daryl Morey. And obviously, you know, he wants to pair those guys. So I would assume they would try to work on that first before entertaining a Bradley Beal deal. Yes, agreed.